All right. Uh, good afternoon. It's 5 o'clock where we come together every single day uh, to give an update on this coronavirus, but also uh, to recommit ourselves to doing everything it takes to protect one another here in Kentucky. This is a difficult and anxious time, and this gives us a chance every day to come together and to truly know that we are going to get through this and we're going to get through it together. Yesterday I started this and I'm going to do it every day. I want us to say it together. We are going to get through this. We are going to get through this together. One more time, and I know it sounds hokey, but saying it helps us believe it. And we are going to have to believe it and to be determined uh, to protect the people around us. So we will get through this. We will get through it together. Uh, today um, we're having uh, some, some technical difficulty here, so we won't have uh, some of the, the, the slides or the video uh, that we normally do, and we're going to do it um, in a little bit shorter uh, of a time period. And, and in fact, I'm going to talk uh, about our update um, before I get into some of the, the, the good things that we've been talking about um, that, that have been going on uh, lately. I've talked about how the next two weeks are absolutely critical here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky to do everything we can to what they call flatten the curve, but let's admit what that means. To lessen our number of cases, to make sure our healthcare system is not overwhelmed, and to ultimately protect the lives of our citizens, both in ensuring those most vulnerable don't get the coronavirus, and second, that we have uh, enough uh, health care capability to protect those uh, that do. So today's uh, update is, is a little bit tough, uh, but we knew that there would be more cases. Uh, we knew that they would escalate uh, as we were uh, going through this, and we knew that we would see significantly more cases here in Kentucky. Uh, so uh, today uh, we are reporting 92 uh, new cases of the coronavirus, uh, but thankfully uh, we have no confirmed deaths here in the Commonwealth today. Uh, so tonight uh, the Capitol Dome and, and, and the Governor's Mansion will not be lit up green, uh, though each and every day we lose someone here in the Commonwealth, uh, we will do that. Uh, of our new cases, I can confirm by county that we have uh, one in Boone, one in Boyle, one in Bracken, two in Breckenridge, one in Butler, one in Campbell, one in Carroll, one in Clark, five in Davis, 23 in Fayette, one in Floyd, two in Franklin, one in Grant, 10 in Hopkins, 23 in Jefferson, three in Kenton, two in Madison, one in McCracken, one in Mercer, one in Nicholas, two in Scott, one in Shelby, one in Spencer, two in Warren, and one in Washington. But folks, we've been talking about this for weeks, that we know there have been more, there's going to be more cases, and we know we're going to have a day where there's more than the 92 that we have here. We also know that there's going to be more deaths as we go, but we are ready for this. We've been preparing for it, both personally and emotionally, as well as a state. And we got to make sure uh, that we are committed, absolutely committed to doing what it takes to flattening this curve, uh, and we know now that we are um, on that increase. Uh, we know we're there, and, and the increase, even when we flatten the curve, happens. Our goal is to do everything we can to flatten it out as soon as we can. These next two weeks are critical. So I know, I know the, the personal emotions uh, that this coronavirus is causing. It makes us anxious, afraid, uncertain, sad and isolated. But I hope you know that I think right now we are more connected than ever, even if we have to be physically apart. Our safety depends on us caring about each other more now than ever before in my lifetime. It requires us being a commonwealth for the common good, putting the health of our people above our self-interests. In fact, it is a calling for us to hear and a clear truth for us to believe that our individual actions as we move through this impact the safety and the health 
of others. Now, when I was elected uh, in last November, I felt we were as fractured and as separated of a commonwealth and as a country as I have ever seen, and I believe now we are more united uh, than I have ever seen. United in that we know the adversary we face, but with this adversary we all, every single one of us, have to live up to our duty as a, as a member of the Commonwealth and as a patriotic American to protect those around us. More than ever, we are connected to each other. Our actions matter. I've said before, this is a test of humanity. It absolutely is. Folks, we cannot have hundreds of people coming together in Louisville, uh, which the mayor talked about happening last night. If hundreds of people come together, several people are going to die because of it. That is what we are facing. We have to be better about passing that test of humanity. And even when it's really hard, and we're getting reports of funerals that are not limiting the number of people that can be there, that loved one that's passed on would not want their funeral to be a reason that someone else uh, might pass on. These things we are doing right now, they are hard, but they are critical. But we, we are in this together. We are in this together because even though we have to stay apart, what we do, each and every one of us, every single day matters. Every Kentuckian matters and everything, every action, every contact that we reduce, Every time we go to the grocery store and we make sure that it's not a social hour, every single one of those matters. And folks, we need you to believe that it matters more now and in the next couple of weeks than, than ever. Um, I know that uh, we do this every day and we try to enjoy it some, but it's just, it's so important right now. So I need you to believe. I need you to believe that you are a part of Team Kentucky and that this is a team that is fighting for the lives and the health of our loved ones. You are a starter on that team each and every day. I want you to take pride, like I know you have, in the actions that you are taking. And I want you to take responsibility too for both yourself and your family members. If you have a young adult uh, in your household or 18, I need you to be more responsible for them now than ever before. Most are being very responsible. But knowing that if you don't know where they are and they're playing on a basketball court with a bunch of other kids, that that spreads the virus. So we need to be better. We need to be more disciplined. And we need to be more responsible than we've ever been asked to be. But I know that we can do it because I feel it every day. We are more connected than ever before. I see it in the sidewalk chalk, whether it's out in front of where I'm living and whoever did that, thank you. These are tough days on a lot of people. They're tough days on me, too. Thank you. Uh, you see it in the children that get it and that um, uh, put the signs up in the windows. You see it in everybody who's lighting their house up green, knowing that someone's loved one has been lost, even if it's not theirs. Now, this is our calling as a generation to face an adversary that could take so many. We have got to answer that call. Uh, another tough um, uh, thing about today's is that we have uh, another one-year-old, I believe, in, in Fayette County. I will get an update uh, on their condition. Uh, but remember, uh, just because uh, we think that this has bigger ramifications for those in different areas doesn't mean that somebody's actions couldn't spread this to an infant. So let's remember, uh, let's make sure that we are doing our part, that we are together KY, that we are a patriot, and most importantly, that we stay healthy at home. With 94 uh, or 92, 90 plus new cases, being healthy at home has never been more important. So let me be clear, unless you're going to work, unless you're going to get groceries, you ought to be at home. That doesn't mean you can't get out and enjoy the outside, but it does mean you can't socialize with people when you're out there. Right now, healthy at home is your patriotic duty as a Kentuckian and as an American. All right, let's move to um, some good news because every day uh, there is good news. First, today we received a major disaster declaration from the federal government. 
That is going to help us cover costs up to 75% for certain uh, costs that the federal government will pay for. Specifically, it enables uh, FEMA to reimburse us for costs associated with measures taken before, during, and after this coronavirus to protect public health and safety. That includes uh, costs associated with our State Health Emergency Operations Center, uh, disinfecting eligible facilities, providing temporary medical facilities, which we're working on, purchasing equipment and supplies, and directing law enforcement to provide necessary assistance. It is a 75-25, meaning the federal government for approved uh, activities will cover 75% of those activities. Uh, that is good news. Second, we continue to work on our drive-through testing, which when we're able to launch, again, we'll start limited. Understanding those resources are for the sickest, for our first responders, for health care workers. Uh, we've had some good updates on that. I hope early this next week we can have the major announcement I wanted to have last week. I'm as disappointed as anyone else that we haven't had it yet, but I will say we have had some good discussions and good news, but I'm not going to tell you something is going to go in live until it is actually uh, going to happen. Third, uh, we signed our agreement today. I just did it with the Department of Labor, which is going to allow us. Can you put up the new slide on unemployment insurance, James? We just got our technology back. It's going to provide us to do a couple of things. Number one, raise the maximum weekly benefit uh, for those uh, receiving unemployment by $600. Second, to increase the benefit weeks by 13 for a total of 39 weeks. Third, to fund state um, unemployment benefits for individuals not typically eligible. And last, um, allow us to expand various programs. Again, this is good news. We want to make sure that we are protecting uh, each and every one of you out there to make sure that you have enough uh, to get through this. Um, we announced a lot of cases today. Let me say that the coronavirus isn't going to last forever. We know it is temporary, but we know we got to be tough enough to take however long it takes. We will get through this, so sign up if you qualify for unemployment. Make sure that you are on it. We got to get through this in the short term, and we will rebuild for the long term. Let's just make sure that you are okay. Uh, fourth, um, some updates on WIC, and for that, uh, we have Secretary Eric Freelander. couple of very quick things. WIC is the program called Women, Infants, and Children. It is the program that helps women who need assistance with very young children, newborns, get access to screening and healthy foods. We have been able to get a waiver so that we don't have to do in-person meetings anymore and we can maximize those benefits. The same is true for food stamps and SNAP. We have waived in-person meeting as well as maximized the benefits that anybody can receive under SNAP and made sure that those certification requirements match how, as long as we announced previously. The other thing we've done is that we've moved all of the eligibility workers who do intake into their homes so that they can begin to do intake remotely. We held our first Saturday hours. We are expanding our hours for everyone uh, throughout next week. And I want to make sure that I give you the right phone numbers. I don't know if there's a slide for that. But um, we have eligibility numbers. So if you're interested in, in receiving SNAP, which is food stamps, uh, please call 1-855-306-8595. And if you're looking for Medicaid, because many people will need Medicaid and we are going to make sure that we get Medicaid to as many people as possible, get you health coverage. Uh, the number to call is 855-459-6328. So thank you. We are working for you. Uh, we want to thank Eric and uh, all the folks in CHFS that are working over in unemployment. Uh, everybody that's working so hard, our Department of Public Health, uh, but also thank you to everybody out there that's following the guidance. We need you. Uh, our success in fighting this virus, the amount of people we will be able to protect, 
ultimately comes down to you, and I cannot uh, thank you uh, enough. So we gave the tough news, but now let's go to the good news. Now, around this Commonwealth, uh, I've been truly proud of people coming together. And, and we uh, normally do this at the top of the hour, but our technology is now uh, working. Um, I wanted to just, again, go through some of the really great things that are out there. Now, when we are tested is when some of the very best comes out. And I want you to keep filling up social media with our hashtags. It is so important. It's important to your and to my mental health. It's important to, to model this behavior so other people see it. Uh, I will tell you that if people see you maintaining your social distance, they will do the, the same. So let's all make sure uh, that we're doing our part. Uh, so I love this. You know, how much uh, of chalk on, on the sidewalk and, and pictures are we seeing all over Kentucky? It's, it's something really special. And it's been uh, truly uh, great to see. And, and it's something that, that can be shared. Go next. Just again, we've got people all over Kentucky who have taken up uh, this call uh, that are lighting their houses up green for compassion, for renewal, to honor those uh, that we've lost. You know, we've now uh, lost numerous Kentuckys and, and yesterday, Kentuckians, and yesterday we lost uh, three. It was a hard day, and we're gonna have other hard days. But this lets their families know that people all over this Commonwealth, everywhere, care so much about them, and that even going through this when it's going to be hard, because you're not gonna be able to see so many of your loved ones at a difficult time, uh, that you are not alone. And on that, we want everyone that has you know, a bell, whether it's in your home or your house of worship, you know, every day at 10 a.m., let's ring them. And make sure that we all know that we are in this together, even if we can't be close uh, to one another. Let's look at the next. All right, uh, this from uh, one of our churches, the Green River Memorial Baptist Church, uh, going around and making sure on each door in their rural community that there is a notice of how they can get groceries dropped off. Talk about passing the test of compassion, about getting out there and making sure that those that might not be able to leave their home and don't know who to call can still get the, the food that, that they need. Uh, folks, this is special and it's happening everywhere. Uh, we have to pick just a couple of these slides. This is representative of so many of your work. Again, getting outside is perfectly fine, but you got to do it within your own family. Again, it can't be a reason uh, to, to ultimately uh, violate the rules and regulations we have, but you know, we see families doing more together than we have in a long time. You know, I've got two kids. My son Will is 10 and my daughter Lila is nine. And I said to them the other day, did you ever know how fortunate you'd be to have a sibling? Uh, and I think right now they recognize it. All right, people still finding ways to get the exercise they need and finding new ways to do things. This is virtual yoga. I admit, as your governor, I've never done yoga. But making sure that there are ways uh, for folks to be able to do it even though they can't go into that studio, this is the type of adaptation that we have to be doing. Again, folks coming through, donating PPE each and every day, keep it up. There's more out there. There's more out there in places that aren't going to need it. This is the battle of our lifetime. Let's make sure that everybody who has PPE to donate does it. And thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody out there that's looking, uh, everybody out there that's finding it, and everybody out there that's donating it. And remember, just about everything you donate goes to your local health department or hospitals, meaning it's going to be there to help people in your community. All right, and now we have a video. Admittedly, I'm a little excited about this because we talked about how, especially with this being the weekend and it being so nice, that social distancing was going to be very difficult. But we have parents and kids finding amazing ways to spend time. Uh, this one is going to involve a little bit of physics and a little bit of math 
Um, and I love that it starts uh, with the two words, take 16. Let's play it. Take 16. So just an example of now that we are healthy at home, different things that you can do. Make the videos. Put them out there. Let other people see your creativity. Uh, it's going to help uh, another family. And, and one more thing on the videos. Um, you know, every day I say we're going to get through this. We're going to get through it together. If you believe it, why don't you make a video? Put it out there on social media. We'll play one a day. Because when I say we're in this together, I mean it. And your fellow Kentuckians uh, ought to hear it uh, from you. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm just going to go over a couple of the things that we do uh, each day. Um, you know, the, the thank yous. And again, thank you to everybody who's out there and working. I do want to ask our local TV, radio, and news stations uh, to crank up uh, the, the public announcements. Uh, especially with the uh, cases we've had today and with some of the um, uh, crowds that are coming together in parks or other places, uh, we need your help more now uh, than ever. So if you can be creative, if you can get them out there, if you can play them as much as you can, you are such an important part uh, of this battle uh, and we need even more help even though you have most definitely answered the, the call. Uh, just a few resources I want to make sure we always talk about. Uh, one is the website kycovid19.ky.gov kycovid19.ky.gov this is your resource for the truth because every day we're hearing wild rumors and you are too that's how anxiety uh, works you can go to this website to see what's real and and what's not now, if you hear a rumor I can virtually guarantee you it is not true. That's why they call it a rumor. So go to the website and don't let that type of, 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 of rumor or other, you know, increase the anxiety uh, that's there. Our coronavirus hotline, 1-800-722-5725, 1-800-722-5725. If we can put up the window seat care slide, uh, that's what's important to use this number for. This number is for if you are well but nervous or have significant questions. If you are sick but would have not otherwise gone to a doctor, call your primary care physician. Call your primary care physician. Uh, that way you can directly speak to them about what it is. And remember, there's more telehealth now than has ever been allowed, uh, in, uh, in Kentucky at least, in, in human history. And what we're seeing are some really good responses. Maybe we can uh, talk about that next time, but we're seeing some really good results uh, out of it too. You can get the care you need without going into a healthcare facility now more than ever. That does a couple of things. Number one, you're not going to a place where you might be exposed. And number two, you're not going to overwhelm our healthcare capacity. So we want you to take uh, advantage of that. But remember, if you are truly sick and need care, uh, or if you are injured, go get the care uh, that you need. Um, orders that we've put out, just important ones. No public gatherings, none. Right now in Kentucky, uh, that's not just our recommendation. That's part of an order. Guys, you, you can't do it. Uh, and while uh, we haven't encouraged um, enforcement in, in the, the normal law enforcement sense, uh, there are going to be people out there asking you to break up if you are in these groups. And remember, if you come together in a large group, that means most likely multiple people may die because of it. And I know I'm not normally that direct, but that's uh, the truth. And we can't have some of these large groups that we've been seeing uh, the last couple days. Uh, thank you to all uh, of the small business owners or all the people that worked at the types of facilities that now can't have in-person traffic. I understand your sacrifice, and I know it's hard, uh, but it is for all of our protection, uh, and you all have been amazing 
uh, in your support for, for what we are doing. I know it's hardest on you if you would have been going to a job and aren't right now. I know it's also hard on you if you would be opening your business to the public right now and you can't. Um, but by doing that, you are protecting that public, you are protecting your employees, and we greatly uh, appreciate you. Uh, with that, I'm going to open it up to about 15 minutes of, of questions, uh, and we'll wrap up just a little bit early today. Uh, we'll go back and forth again between folks that are uh, here today and those that are at home. Yes. Is there any word of Eleanor. Yes. Eleanor. Uh, the question is, do we have word of an employee at Toyota testing positive? I'd have to get that information. Um, I don't have it with me. What we can expect, though, is, is over time, someone will test positive at every major employer that has several thousand employees. Um, what I can say about Toyota is uh, they have extended um, their shutdown. Uh, they actually called me about that. I think it is a very responsible move. Uh, they are doing everything they can for their employees uh, during this period of time, uh, but I was impressed by the call that we had and the, and the steps that, that they're taking. Um, about GE Appliance Park, with employees protesting, three or four outlets asked the governor's thoughts on GE's plan to reopen Appliance Park in Louisville this Monday. Uh, we've been having conversations uh, both with GE and the union. Um, we believe that their discussions are going to continue. Uh, we do know uh, that the facility itself has made significant changes. We also know that the workers aren't necessarily um, satisfied with those changes. Ultimately, we need uh, to get to a place where people feel safe uh, going to work, and we hope that uh, we can get uh, to that point. Um, I have another question about that. Uh, does the state know about drive-through testing that's supposed to begin Monday at a church in Graves County? And what does the governor think? So I'm not aware um, of, of, of that uh, drive-through test, uh, but here's what I'll say. Um, most of the testing that's available right now is available to either those that are the sickest, those that are exhibiting symptoms and are in the most vulnerable population, or first responders that have been exposed and right now are in self-quarantine, which means they can't get back to work, especially our, our healthcare folks. And if you're gonna advertise a drive-through test facility, make sure you're very clear on who can come in uh, to get that test. Let's not create false hope while resources are still fairly small. And I'll say today, like I do every day, that we don't have enough personal protective equipment in Kentucky. We don't have it enough in this country. And we don't have enough testing. Though we are, from the state side, really working on an opportunity to, to ramp it up, but I want it to be real and fully confirmed uh, before we announce it. We're Shelby. Yeah. Yes. We're seeing people flood hardware stores like Lowe's and Home Depot today, and it's almost impossible to practice social distancing inside of those stores. What's your message to those? Uh, so the question is, we've seen people flooding Lowe's and Home Depot today, and it's almost impossible to practice social distancing in there. Uh, listen, those stores, if people aren't going to engage in social distancing themselves, these stores are going to have to force it, uh, and they can. Uh, I'm, I'm open to them providing different ways to do it. Uh, but we cannot have our grocery stores or our, our, our stores where, you, where, where you, need, you can go to buy the home goods you need to get through this. It can't be a way to frustrate the type of social distancing uh, that we're doing. And, and we just had 90-plus cases today. I mean, this is real. We are in that escalation that we knew would happen, but it means we got to be more disciplined now than ever. Um, as important as new cases, and unfortunately deaths are, those who have recovered is also important. And this, this uh, Kyle, you're entirely right. Is there an estimate on how many people have recovered so far in Kentucky from the reported 302 cases as of yesterday? We think that number is approximately, and this is an estimate, uh, 64. And that's some really good news. Now remember, it takes a period of time. Symptoms can be uh, dormant uh, for up to two weeks. Some people may never have uh, symptoms at all. So this is uh, really, uh, really uh, good news.
word cases spread in that part of the state? Uh, the question is, Appalachian Regional Hospital, uh, did they lay off or furlough? Uh, uh, just either laid off or furloughed. 500 um, folks, are we concerned if it spreads uh, in that area? Our understanding is that all of these hospitals or healthcare systems are keeping people uh, uh, not only in the loop but on call, uh, ready to come back. Listen, the, 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 the surge is, is here. It's going to continue to increase. And we had cases from Eastern Kentucky in our report today, and there are going to be more of them. I believe all these people are going to be back at their hospital very, very soon. Uh, what we've had to do in the short term is another sacrifice. Uh, most of these folks aren't there because we had to stop all elective procedures because most all of them take PPE and would have taken beds as this surge is, is coming. Um, we are working uh, with our rural hospitals to make sure that they are not just available for people in their region, but they are also available um, uh, for us to divert people to if necessary, and they are getting ready for that. But, but instead of just being worried about the people in the community that I believe will be ready to come back, we're taking an extra step and trying to do everything we can to make sure we have a network of those recently retired healthcare workers, uh, those who, who have just recently let their certifications lapse. We believe that throughout all of this, we're gonna need many more uh, than we're operating or working right before this. Uh, so our hope and, and my understanding uh, with ARH and others is that this is a, it, they're even telling their folks they believe this is temporary and we're gonna need them. Um, this is another question from you. Uh, so uh, next question, are in-home child care operators able to file for unemployment? Uh, yes, yes they are. I'm working on a story about a black lung clinic that was shut down in Pike County uh, as a result of, of my order. And the clinic provides respiratory treatment for folks with black lung disease and apparently is not allowed to operate under the current order. We're trying to track this down. Uh, we can't locate um, this facility. Uh, we would certainly want to talk with them. Uh, this is certainly the type of treatment that could be uh, necessary to sustain life and would not be uh, elective at the same time. We don't know what type of treatment they are providing. If it is something that can be done at home uh, with various uh, machines. And so we really need to get down to, to, the, to the facts of that. You know, there are a number of types of breathing treatment, and I don't know the type we're talking about here that can be done at home. And if that's the case, that individual would be safer uh, at home than going to a facility where potentially if multiple people are being served at one time, it could spread through. But we want to make sure we get down to the bottom of this and that each and every person that would have otherwise been going to the facility gets the help that they need. Um, I got a question here, um, and I'll, it's from Stu Johnson for Dr. Stack. He'll be here tomorrow, and we will ask and answer that question uh, tomorrow. Eleanor. Uh, so this is uh, independent contractors uh, going through the unemployment system uh, and finding there are many sections that don't apply to them and not knowing what to put in. Um, let me call up Josh Benton for that. Uh, but let me tell them we want you to file for unemployment. We are working on our system each and every day. It's entirely new uh, that you are eligible for it. And every issue, let us know or let the media know, and we will work to resolve it. Josh. Thank you, Governor. Um, so uh, the question on uh, independent contractors, as long they're, they're still able to file, and we're fixing those things on the back end of the application. So it, the, even though it may tell them right now uh, that they don't have the right wages or, or something like that to qualify, it, they still uh, are we're still processing their claim, and they'll still be paid for that claim. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. Joe? Mm -hmm. that we've had. Can we expect for the next week that we're still going to see the, the case, number of new cases continue to, to go up? So the question is, um, and I repeat it because people at home can't, can't hear, uh, that 92 cases today is almost a double of yesterday. Uh, can we expect in the next week to continue to see them to, to go up? 
Uh, the answer to that is probably. Um, we expect for there to be uh, significantly more cases as we move forward. Uh, but what we have had on different days that we haven't seen in other states is we've been flat on some days. We had 50 something for, for two straight days. And, and that is on those days, uh, good news. But, but we're gonna have lots of more cases. This is why we have been making the sacrifices that we have. This is why we've been talking about when to seek care. This is why we've been out um, getting more ventilators uh, that we can uh, move to where they're needed. This is why we're trying to ramp up our testing capacity. This is why we have Healthy at Home. Uh, this is why we are asking you to engage in social distancing. Now, this is a virus that spreads um, like wildfire. It is very contagious. And so, yes, we will see a lot more cases in Kentucky. And at the end of the day, while I want to keep the total number of cases down, what's most important is that we have that health care capacity to make sure that we help those uh, that need it the most. And that's going to be tough on us. That's going to be tough on, on many Kentuckians who will get the coronavirus but can ride it out at home uh, just talking to a doctor each and every day. That it'll be uncomfortable. Uh, but when you're willing to do that and when you do that, it means that hospital bed where that ICU is available for someone that is much more vulnerable uh, than, than you are. And so for everybody out there that is right now in quarantine or has it and you're at home, uh, thank you. You probably didn't expect that and you probably don't feel it, but thank you. If you are just checking in with a doctor and you were able to deal with this at home, you, you're freeing up a bed for somebody who, who will desperately need it. And so I want you to view that as an act of patriotism too. And I mean, the, 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 the symptoms can be really tough in this and can be uncomfortable. Uh, but no, if you're lying on your couch or you're lying in bed and you know you're gonna be all right to get through it, uh, that you have, you have taken on a, a heroic act that makes sure that somebody else is gonna get what they need. All right, I'm told that the Dale Hollow Lake State Resort Park Lodge, it's very specific, and campground are full of guests, many from other states, as far away as New York and Louisiana, there has been a problem maintaining social distancing. I also hear that some state park campgrounds have been closed. Could you please give a report on state parks in general and Dale Hollow in particular? I haven't received those specific complaints for Dale Hollow. We will have to follow up on that. <laughs> but as of yesterday, as of yesterday, um, we have given the authority um, to close certain campgrounds to those that manage them. Again, we cannot allow uh, for uh, different areas, campgrounds, playgrounds to be a place where people uh, gather. Uh, we reported on deaths in Fayette and Jefferson County yesterday. Do we know the counties of residents for those that died? Uh, we still don't have that information. There's a question about retired doctors, nurses, and medical students. Uh, yes, there is a demand for them. We haven't had to put them to work yet, uh, but we are cataloging them and making sure they are ready to go. And then this last question is, who is in charge of enforcing social distancing? Lexington police has been getting calls, but they say that they can't enforce it. Now, what we've asked in this time of anxiety and difficulty is, is for our folks in law enforcement to try to encourage um, rather than uh, go to more extreme measures. But as we uh, continue to move forward and with large crowds, uh, we may have to get a little tougher, folks. It's people's lives that ultimately uh, depend on it. And one more? Okay. Private uh, uh, question on the total number of tests. Um, this past week, you've said it's very important when you count private negative tests have been over 10,000, over 11,000. Can you give a, a figure for right now? The question is total number of tests, and I have an estimate. And I, I will tell you that I can't confirm the figure because we're still not getting enough of the reporting back, and, and we're working on it. I'm, I'm frustrated, too. Our approximation is that we've had about 15,000 uh, tests in, in Kentucky. Um, that that is, is based on the rates that we know are, are out there uh, of, of positives, and, and we're pretty comfortable uh, with that number. Uh, all right, folks. So. Um, here we are, Saturday. Uh, we have been going through this for a while, and we got to be strong enough and resilient enough 
uh, to continue to go through it. Uh, we are seeing uh, at least the start of our search. And we know that now, more than ever, uh, that we have to engage in social distancing and we have to do our duty as a Kentuckian and as an American. Again, I know that this thing can make you feel alone, but we have never been more connected and we've never been more united than we are right now. Those things that divided us three months ago don't matter. Those things that, that, that made neighbors not talk to neighbors three months ago don't matter. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to talk face to face with that neighbor uh, again? Now maybe it puts uh, things in context, uh, but uh, this is all of us, every Kentuckian and every American versus the coronavirus. Uh, this is our challenge. This is our time. I know we're up for it. Encourage those around you. Make sure you stay healthy at home and we will get through this together. Thank you.